This is a brand new model and a brand new concept from Glue Game. It is the BGM 75 and the most obvious thing about it, it is in fact a catamaran. It's the first one from Blue Game, in fact it's the first one from San Lorenzo generally. So there's been a lot of development gone into this, a lot of work and it is a completely new concept. Now she's 75 foot long, she's about eight meters wide. So they've not gone for a really square traditional catamaran, they've kept the sort of the monohole look and the monohull fill to some extent, but of course it is beamier than a traditional monohull would be, and therefore the space on board, as you will see in just a moment, is pretty spectacular. One thing to mention is it's got drop balconies on the sides here. The other one is deployed, so I'll show you what that looks like, but they add an extra two meters to every, to, uh, to every side, to both sides, there's only two sides. Um, and so it's taking the beam then from eight meters just over, and with those down, it takes it out to 12 meters. So yeah, it's pretty impressive. There we go, some stats here for anybody who wants to see them since they're walking past it. But we'll head on board and I will give you the full tour. Okay, so we're gonna board via this passerelle. What's interesting about this is it becomes steps. You can tilt it down, tilt it up. So steps onto the key, steps into the water and it retracts back into the bathing platform. There's also a garage on this one. So your tender can live in here or your toys. And then that basically rolls out onto here. This one drops right down into the water and then this one lowers, these steps come out and that's how you launch your tender or of course you put toys on there and launch that. But you can see how much space there is on this bathing platform. If I come all the way over here, it's a big space, isn't it? Look at that. That's fantastic. We've got um, controls for everything in here. And also, you've got a pretty big storage area as well. It's very helpful. That goes right through to the garage, as you can see. So that's a handy little spot. And then these steps take us up once we've let this nice lady come down. Nope, changed her mind. <laughs> On we go. And when you get up here, you start to appreciate the beam of this. Because obviously being a catamaran, although they've not gone over square with it, it is nonetheless a very beamy boat. So the footprint that you get, the sheer space you get, is fantastic. It's very blue game in feel though. It still has that vibe, that high quality Italian styling it still feels like an expensive boat. And check this out, <laughs> look at the size of that. So you do get, as you'd expect, a tremendous amount of space. Okay, we are going to, which way will we go first? Let's go forward. Let's avoid these people if we can. We've got dining area over here. And there's also a helm station. This is not the main helm station, but you can drive the boat from here. It's got IPS on it, so you can control the boat from here. Thrusters on here as well, and you've got the operating screen here. So this is an internal helm position. You can see there's a wiper on there, but the main helm is up on the upper deck. We'll see that in just a moment. But we're going to head down first of all, and I'll show you what's going on down here. First thing we've got, I think <laughs> there's cooking going on. I don't think it's a fight. <laughs> this is the owner's cabin. Look at this, full beam of the boat. What's interesting is, despite being a catamaran, quite often with catamarans, they use the hulls and you sort of drop down on both sides. This one, they've kept it flat all the way across, so you don't have those steps up and down. And you can actually see the shape of the hull where it comes up at the front. It's just very carefully moulded in. That's rather nice the way they've done that. In here, we've got the ensuite. Shower, really good size, is in here. Of course, this is the thing with catamarans, isn't it? <laughs> Not short space and beautifully finished, as these things always are. And then, toilet, bidet, in there. The other thing that we've got here then, if we go back just a little bit further, is a very nice walk-in wardrobe. There's a pocket door that comes out of here. But yeah, really, really good size, look at that. Very nice indeed, AV equipment of course. Nice Eames chair over there, lovely. If we come around a little bit further, we've got crew areas then coming on down into this hull. So if we drop down here, well there's the day heads first of all, and that's just tucked away in here. 
like so. Again, decent size. That looks like a bit of storage in there, doesn't it? No, that's just a mirror. Oh, interesting. I'm sure there's a really good purpose for that. <laughs> I'll let you decide what it is. And then if we come back here, there's more storage here. And then the crew are very much using this area. So we will slip through very quickly, but we've got the galley just here. Cold storage, cooking, all the usual kind of stuff. And then we'll slip on through. We're not going to go into the crew cabins, but there are two of them. So there's a crew mess area here. We can see one of the cabins here with bunk beds. There's another one with bunk beds back there. And then that's through to an ensuite to this cabin. And I think it's shared with that one as well, if I remember rightly. TV in here. So yeah, for a 75 foot boat, again, we're back to, you know, it's a catamaran, there's a lot of spare space. This is a lot bigger than you would normally get on a 75 foot boat. Normally you just get one of these on a 75 foot boat, not two, and you don't get the mess area. Okay, we'll come back out of here. There we go. And then we will loop up. So we're back up to this sort of half deck where the owner's cabin is that we saw a moment ago. And then we'll come on round again and we'll drop down into the other hull. We'll get a better impression of this now because there's nobody in here. Look at that. It's a big area, isn't it? All right, we're going to cross over and we're going to drop down here. And there are two cabins down here. They're pretty much identical. That is some of the AV equipment. Oh, there we are, slit up. <laughs> Even better. And then if we spin on around, these are nice. And again, you can see where they, obviously we're down inside one of the hulls and it comes up and goes across and drops down. And as it comes up and goes across, they've kind of rolled that into where the bed is. It's very nice. So you've got steps up the side and then this section here. It's quite cleverly configured, really. We'll come right across to the little mirror wave, have a look at the ensuite. And there's a big shower in here as well, a big rainfall shower. There we go, on this side, little area to tuck yourself away, also in behind the door here, we've got some nice storage areas. Storage solutions, <laughs> that's what they call them, isn't it? Everything's a solution these days, never a problem. Let's cross over, it's pretty much the same, this one. Double bed. Just want to tuck yourself away. The en suite and the shower. Some nice big windows in here as well. Lovely. Alrighty. And again, the <laughs> storage solutions. That's my new word of the day, or words of the day. All right, we're going to come back up here. We're going to take a look at the upper deck, have a wander around the outside as well, and then we'll have a look in the engine space. This is a bit of storage like so. So you can put your crockery in there if you wanted to. There's a wine cooler in there as well. In fact, it looks like there's a bit up here as well. So look at this. Ah, how intriguing. Oh, it's throttle controls, because normally you just use the IPS for manoeuvring, of course. But you have that as well. Interesting. I'm going to guess that there's laundry facilities in the crew area. It's bound to be, but because it was being used, it was a bit of a dash through. But we'll assume that's where they are. Okay, let's head across here. We've got these steps that wrap us up and round. It's all lovely, the stainless steel work on these, isn't it? Gorgeous. Look at this. And this is the upper deck. So what you've got out here is your external dining area. It's under the shade of this hard top. There's a nice social area again. You're getting the beam, aren't you? Because you've got this dining area and you've got room for a big settee, sort of social space over here. And then you've got the sun beds back here. A lot of this stuff is freestanding, so you could lay this out pretty much how you want it if you want to put these sideways on or something. No reason why you shouldn't. Let's come right back around here. That's a big space. That's a really big space. We'll stroll all the way around it. I always think you can tell you're on a big boat when the furniture doesn't come to the edges. There's gaps that you can walk through. It's always my sign of a big boat. Bar area is up here, so this will have, I can figure out how to get into it, <laughs> I can't, how do I get in there, hang on, oh there we go, it's obvious when you know, ice makers in there, 
yeah there we go cupboards and so forth i didn't want to pull too hard in case i was putting in the wrong place there we go and then that's a bit of a two-handed job that i think oh there we go sink underneath there and i'm going to guess that that one's probably a barbecue isn't it yes it is there we go lovely and then this is the main helm position now you can enclose this there are these tracks here and you can put clear screens all the way around so if you want this enclosed you can have it but obviously on day like today you want it open this has got garmin's surround vision so you've got it it's a little bit like on a car in these modern cars where it looks like a helicopter view and you can see all the way around as you're parking that's what this does um, so you can see in real time exactly what's going on so um, there we go somebody walking past there um, <laughs> is there anybody walking around when you need them to be is there uh, you can see here people wandering around so it's, yeah just like the sort of systems you get on cars it's now on boats and these are the lines here measuring distances so one meter two meter three meter four meter typically so as you're docking you can see where you're putting it if we move our way across we've got the operating system for the boat in behind this one so you can get into lighting and all that kind of stuff um, navigation is in here of course um, tanks and valves all that kind of stuff all configured from there throttle controls ips joystick and one of these lovely lovely blue grain stroke san renzo wheels fantastic vhf radio and then you can walk right around this stand right at the front get a tremendous view look at this can in the sunshine how lovely so what else have we got to do we have got deck areas to do and we've got engine space to do but let's just pause again and look at this because that's pretty dramatic isn't it brilliant all right let's go so back down this stairway on around there's the top of that drop balcony you can see so that's the bit that hinges down when you're stationary at anchor there we go <laughs> you're generally stationary at anchor if everything's going well anyway let's wander up here this is going to take us up to the foredeck and what we've got here is just a really nice lounging area entertaining area what do we want to use it for and in fact if we come right around here you can see there's a like a well that you step down into and that makes for a very nice area you can drop that one down and complete that as a sunbathing area and likewise this is the table underneath here the same there you, go, you can see the leg for it so that can be brought up so this can be a dining area or a relaxing area or just a big big sunbed and that's how she looks from here quite a unique looking vessel isn't it let's head on around actually you can see it's a smaller boat to be fair but you can see the difference look at the beam on that I'm not sure which model that one is I reckon that's probably about a 68 something like that at a guess but look at the beam this is a bit bigger but look at the beam there's your difference remarkable okay let's go and see if we can find some engines i don't know what these are <laughs> so we're going to find out i'm going to guess they're deck storage oh it's an adventure isn't it ah, i think i've just locked it hang on yes that's exactly what they are deck storage so canopies that sort of stuff fenders warps etc there we go and close that over and that'll confuse whoever left it open <laughs> okay let's head down here these little chaps here are a spare cleat so if you need to use these you can bring them into play just by doing that with them which is rather nice when you're not using them they fold away and they've even put little stainless steel fillets there so that when the ropes go over they don't rub on the gel coat all the details 
Okay, engine hatch is back here. There is, of course, an engine in each hull, but they're pretty similar. Well, the engines are identical, of course, but I mean, the spaces are pretty similar. So we'll have a look in this one. I'll tell you all about it. It's a long way down, actually, surprising. Quite a deep boat. There we go, and we're in. So what have we got in here then? We have got a Volvo Penta D8 IPS 800. And I know that because it's written on it. Um, but a bit more information for you would be the fact that this is a 625 horsepower engine. There are two of them, as I mentioned, there's another one in the other hull. And these are giving the boat about 25 knots, apparently, and cruising at around 20. What we don't know is the range because this boat is so new, <laughs> nobody's actually done the figures on it yet. It's literally, it's come out of the factory and come straight here. So they know how fast it goes because they brought it here but they don't know how far it goes yet. So those figures you'll have to get from the dealer if you're interested. IPS pod is back there. You've got a jack shaft on this one to connect it. So it brings the engine forward a bit. And then stuff. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. Generator is in here. We've got fuel filters in here. We've got fire extinguishing system in here. And we've got some of the battery management Garmin stuff in here as well. But this blue stuff is all battery management. So charging, that was a battery charger, for example. There's an inverter up there. Also got switch panel in here. So the circuit breakers are tucked away in here. Yeah, but um, you know, I talk about headroom then types sometimes in engine rooms and say, look, look how much room there is above my head. Well, on this one, that's how deep we are. I cannot actually reach the ceiling from this part. Obviously it drops a bit here, but even down in here, it's still very, very good. There we go. That's about that. Let's come back out. As I say, another engine room in the other side, pretty much the same. There we go. And we'll drop that one down. I'm always worried about we're going to lose people down there while I'm down there and nobody's, somebody's not watching where they're going, but so far so good. There we go. I don't actually, I don't need to lock it. Do I? I'll, left, I'll leave it as I found it. All right, let's come back up onto the bow to finish off. Check out this amazing view again. So there we go, that's about the size of that. Massive thanks to San Lorenzo UK, they organised this tour. I'll put a link to those guys in the description. Huge thanks as ever to you for watching it. Let me know what you think of that one. I think that's something a bit different and very interesting. And we'll catch you on the one of these real soon. Take care, bye-bye.